Welcome to section 14 of Immunodeficiencies. In this section, we'll be discussing chronic granulomatous disease. Let's get started. Our story takes place in a cold, northern, snowy town during the holiday season, and a confused elderly grandpa has mistakenly identified this large pine tree as the family Christmas tree. Poor confused grandpa. Anyways, this grandpa represents chronic granulomatous disease. In the past, we like to use grandmas to represent granulomas, and we've taken a variation of this idea and used a grandpa instead of grandma, and used it to represent chronic granulomatous disease. And this super old grandpa has scaled this very tall tree, and he's feeling pretty hardcore. And in the spirit of triumph, this confused grandpa has ripped open his shirt, practically bursting it as he yells to the sky. This shirt bursting represents the respiratory burst that normally occurs in neutrophils. If the respiratory burst is defective, then bacteria are permitted to survive. And since the bacteria can't be killed, macrophages will just wall off the organism, leading to chronic granulomas. But again, bursting shirt represents a problem with the respiratory or oxidative burst. Now, Grandpa's goal was to place this Christmas X on the top of the tree, as goes the tradition of his family. Although, normally the Christmas tree is in their house when they add this ornament to the top. Anyways, this X represents the fact that this is an X-linked condition. On his way up the tree, he has decorated the branches with these purple ornaments. Notice that these ornaments have the characteristic shape of neutrophils. This is to help you remember that neutrophils are what perform the respiratory burst, which again is defective in this condition. Feeling invincible at this point, Grandpa kicked down his oxygen tank that he normally needs, and he really should be using it now, especially at that high elevation on top of the tree. In any case, the oxygen tank has fallen and smashed against the ground several times, as you can see with those crash marks. Eventually, the tank landed in a nearby campfire. That oxygen tank really should have reacted explosively at this point. After all that damage and literally sitting in an active fire pit, well, thankfully, there's been no reaction. Anyways, the lack of oxygen-fueled reaction represents the lack of reactive oxygen species. As part of the respiratory burst within phagocytes, reactive oxygen species are formed, which then act to kill the pathogen. But these reactive oxygen species are lacking, so some pathogens will survive, even when they normally shouldn't. Now when the oxygen tank crashed into the campfire, this ox was super startled. As a result, it kicked this poor guy in the nads. Bringing these ideas together represents NADPH oxidase, or NADPH oxidase. And it's this enzyme, NADPH oxidase, that is problematic in chronic granulomatous disease. Normally, NADPH oxidase will create reactive oxygen species to kill the pathogen. Without it, no reactive oxygen species are formed, as we just highlighted with the non-reactive oxygen tank in the fire. So again, NADS kicked by an ox stands for NADPH oxidase. Now phagocytes in chronic granulomatous disease may still be able to kill many organisms. However, there are many organisms that do survive because they can produce catalase. Catalase is an enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide, which might have been used to kill the microbe. To help you remember to fear catalase-positive organisms, we have this cat back here. Let's zoom up. Now you can see that this cat is chasing some food up this tree. So, cat for catalase-positive organisms. Now there are five catalase-positive bacteria you should be aware of. The first one is Burkholderia cepacea. To help you remember Burkholderia, we have this woodpecker creating several bird holes in the tree. I guess this was the food the cat was after. Anyways, bird holes sounds like Burkholderia. And in the gorgeous northern sky up here, we can see the planet Mars especially well. It's kind of like this old man is howling at Mars, like a werewolf bursting out of its human clothes and yelling at the moon. Anyways, Mars is our symbol for Serratia marsicens. Mars, marsicens. And this pathogen is another catalase-positive bacteria especially dangerous to patients with chronic granulomatous disease. This old grandpa, in spite of his regular confusion, attempts to keep track of his life by writing notes on these 3x5 cards. Normally, he keeps them in his front pocket, but when he burst open his shirt, the cards were tossed into the air. You can see those airborne note cards now. It looks like his notes are totally unreadable, and just scribbles are seen. That makes sense, considering how confused he is on a regular basis. Anyways, these note cards represent nocardia, another scary catalase-positive organism. Now, Grandpa also normally carries around a staff, and when he started to climb up this pine tree, he dropped the staff and left it in the snow below. This staff represents Staph aureus, another catalase-positive organism dangerous to CGD patients. Naturally, Grandpa has a family who's worried sick for him. They finally found him when they spotted his staff on the ground beneath the tree he climbed. Right now, his daughter is trying to lure him down with a fresh, steamy plate of asparagus, his favorite. 
we like to use asparagus to represent aspergillus, another catalase-positive organism. Aspergillus is a fungus, and interestingly, nearly all fungi are catalase-positive. And to help represent fungi, we've also shown this plate that she's brought with steamed mushrooms. We like to use mushrooms to represent fungi. And this is to help you remember that patients with chronic granulomatous disease are susceptible to nearly all fungal infections because nearly all fungi are catalase positive. However, the main fungus that you should be thinking of is aspergillus. Now, since the story takes place in a very snowy area, people here are skilled at making igloos. And this particular igloo has blocks that look strikingly similar to Tetris blocks. Look at those awesome shapes. Now notice the lights decorating the outside of the igloo. They're all blue. The blue lights and the Tetris shapes represent different parts of the word nitro blue tetrazoleum. So blue, Tetris, nitro blue, tetrazoleum. This nitro blue tetrazoleum is a dye that's used to diagnose patients with CGD. Unfortunately, these blue lights on the Tetris igloo aren't working. You can see this person bewildered that they won't work. The failure of the blue lights to light up represents the lack of blue precipitate found in CGD phagocytes. Normally, the nitro blue tetrazoleum dye is taken up by phagocytes and assuming functional NADPH oxidase is present, the phagocytes will create a blue precipitate. If the blue precipitate doesn't appear, then the test indicates chronic granulomatous disease. So again, blue lights not lighting up stands for lack of blue precipitate. Now nearby, there's a road. On either side of the road are two fire hydrants. Although this town is very cold and snowy, they do need to worry about fires. After all, some of the citizens get confused and kick oxygen tanks into fires and stuff like that. So they need lots of fire hydrants. Anyways, having two hydrants so close together on the road represents dihydrant road or dihydrorhodamine, which stands for the dihydrorhodamine test. This is another test used to diagnose patients with CGD. And as you can see, there are green Christmas lights wrapped around both hydrants. This represents the green color that should appear with patients with normal functioning NADPH oxidase. But as you can see, those green lights aren't working. And some of them are broken, just like with the blue igloo lights. Anyways, this should help you remember that chronic granulomatous disease fails to produce the normal green fluorescence expected with the dihydrorhodamine test. And unfortunately, these hydrants have been worn down over the years and are now leaking water. You can see that water flowing down the road now. This flowing water stands for flow cytometry as a way to help you remember that the dihydrorhodamine test is a flow cytometry test. In other words, the green fluorescence that you'd expect with a healthy patient would be visualized through flow cytometry. And that should be all you need to know about chronic granulomatous disease.